All right, welcome, welcome, welcome. Today we are going to set up PFSense. Uh, we're going to create a firewall for our virtual lab. You'll notice I have also gone ahead and created a virtual lab within my Oracle VM and put some boxes in there. So to get started, let's go ahead and download uh, PFSense. Let me bring up a new window. We're going to go to pfsense.org forward slash download. You'll notice right off the bat, let me blow this up a little bit. Uh, we've got version 2.6.0, the newest version. Our architecture is going to be AMD 64-bit, and our installer is going to be ISO. And then you'll just hit that download button. I've already downloaded it today, uh, so we can skip past that portion. But we are going to install it and configure it. Now, I want to be in the home lab. This is where this machine is going to go. So I'm going to press new. I'm going to name it PFSense. It's right now going to my C drive. I want it in my D drive. So let me bring it back down over here to the D drive, to VMs right there. I'll select that folder. The ISO image is in my D drive as well. Let me go to other. And then here you can see it, PFSense release AMD 64, 2.5.2. I'm going to hit that sucker right there. Our type is going to be BSD. Free BSD 64-bit is what we're looking for. I'm going to press next. One gig of uh, RAM is good enough. One CPU is good enough. 16 gigs of space is more than enough. And then we are just going to finish that sucker out. Shouldn't take too long. Did I mess it up? I feel like I might have. That's okay. Let's go back in here. We'll check in settings. So right now we have it as open BSD. It was supposed to be free BSD. There we go. So free ABSD 64-bit. I'll change that right here. Not a big deal. We're going to change the clipboard bidirectional and bidirectional. It doesn't need a description. We're going to go to system settings, motherboard, one gig of RAM, one processor, good and good. PS2 mouse, we're good on that aspect of it. Uh, we're going to go down to network. Now, the network adapter for the way PFSense is set up is network adapter number one is going to be our NAT network. That's how it's going to get its internet. It's going to be on that 10 network for that. Our adapter number two is going to be our host only. So I'm going to set that up for host only adapter uh, and that's going to be on the 192. And that's just how VirtualBox does it. The PFSense dictates where its WAN and LAN is uh, and we have to set it up appropriately to match that. And then USB, I'm going to turn that off. It's going to go to town. I'm going to go ahead and press start, set that sucker up. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do while that's booting up, while that's downloading and getting everything set up, I'm going to go to my Cali Purple here, and I wanted to make some changes. Now, I believe I already did these settings, but I wanted to show you what I was doing so it doesn't look like I was uh, lying to you or if I, uh, if I see them, I, I, I made changes to my home lab without you. Uh, so I'm going to go to System. You'll notice that I'm on 8 gigs of RAM already, but I've switched it down to 2 cores. And the reason I did that is because I've only got 16 CPUs on this computer uh, for my whole system. And I want to be running, if you count the Kali and then PFSense, Windows, Windows Server, and probably another box, I'm already at five cores, and that's by one core each. If I count the fact that Kali's probably going to have two cores, now we're at seven. I'm approaching that 50% limit that I really don't want to go over. I'm probably at one point going to hit 10 cores. That still leaves me six cores for my, for my base system, which is fine. But i got to kind of start looking at, at cores overall within my within my desktop environment. If you're running like eight cores, um, I would encourage you to kind of either one, not do all the systems at once. You really don't want to go over that 50% mark at eight cores. You really want to leave at least four cores uh, available for your host operating system um, at a minimum, which means if you've only got four cores on your computer to start with, this probably isn't a very good way to be going about this. You probably don't want to do a lot of virtualization. Um, so, so be aware of that, right? Those cores are important because you're going to start to see my system lie out a little bit when I start operating five, six machines at once, all right? Uh, next thing we're going to go is we're going to go to storage. doesn't really matter. Network is where I really wanted to be. We're going to switch this. I've already done it once, obviously, right? I'm changing this to host only adapter, virtual next Ethernet adapter. I'm going to press OK, and I'm going to start that sucker up. And the reason I did that is because I want uh, my Kali box to go be going through my firewall. And what's going to happen is let me let me dig out this paint program so you can kind of see kind of see what's going on in in the real world, right? So in a virtual environment as well as any other environment, let's say that I've got my internet over here, okay? I got the internet. That's my internet, really bad internet, but it's internet, okay? It's going to go down to my firewall right here. This is the PF Sense 
that I'm creating today. Ah, my bad handwriting and paint. Okay, so that's PF Sense right there. Now PF Sense is going to kind of act like a router firewall combo for me, uh, and it's going to have all my other systems, right? So I'm going to have Kali up here. I'm going to have Windows 10. I'm going to have Windows Server. Okay, I'm probably going to have Keoptrix. And then I'm going to have something else over here. Probably another Windows Server. Okay. Now, my goal is on one Windows Server, probably this one right here, Windows Server A, we're going to make that into our DHCP, which means it's going to tell everybody what its IP addresses are. Uh, I'm also going to probably do some Active Directory on there. And then whatever else, right? And then this Windows Server down here, it's just going to be a server, right? It's just going to do web server, web server stuff right there, okay? So that's my goal. And then this Keoptrix machine will get moved out, and we'll go through it. Um, I think I'm going to add Suricata on there too. So probably another box for Suricata. But you can see I'm running out of about it, running out of cores for all my systems here. So I need to be careful with what I'm doing because Windows does not like having less than two cores. I could probably do it with one core, but it does not like it, and means it's going to lag out. Which means if I start doing too much, I'm going to either have to get rid of this Windows server down here, or up here, or this Windows 10, just because of a lack of cores. All right. Okay, so that's my that's my goal anyway. Uh, let's log into this thing real quick. So this is the Kali Purple that I've got going on. And then I probably shouldn't have saved that, but my goal is to have an offensive Kali machine outside the firewall, which will then go through and attack those machines. And then I can get my firewall logs. Maybe I'll put the Suricata will be able to help you look at some of the logs. And then I think we talked about putting a Splunk in there as well. So you can see that I'm going to run out of cores pretty quickly uh, in this basic system uh, and so I gotta be careful that I gotta I gotta interact with this down uh, when I get to that point you probably see my Kali's running at one core as opposed to two but man I, I don't like going that slow unless I have to so I'm gonna keep it at two cores for a little while anyway let's do an IF config and you'll notice that we're at 192.168.56.101 now instead of a 10 network uh, and let's try to access the network while that's coming up let's go back to our our PF sense it's saying hey do you want to accept this we're going to press uh, yes, and then we're going to do install PF Sense. We're going to continue with the default, and then right here where it says auto ZFS, we're going to drop it down. We're going to do a UFS BIOS. We're going to press OK. This is going to take a few minutes. Let's get back into here. So for our Kali box, I'm going to try to hit Google, and you'll notice it's not coming up, right? And it's not coming up because it's on host only, which means it's literally sandboxed, okay? It doesn't have access to the outside internet. If I try to do anything on the internet, it's not going to let me. Um, if I tried to hook another box up to it from a, from a host only, I could do that, right? And it would, it would communicate between those two systems. But right now, it has no access to the internet. And so what that firewall is going to do, what that PF sense is going to do, is it, because it has two connectors, one's on the host only, and then one has access to the internet, it's forcing all the virtual machines to go through that PF sense, through that firewall, <coughs> which will then allow me to collect logs. Uh, and then that firewall will be that bridge between the internet and my host only network and that's that's where PF sense really kind of shines and allows us to do a lot of things plus it's a firewall right all right so the installation is now finished uh, manual modifications we're gonna hit no and then right here I want you to stop see where it says complete a PF sense installation of PF sense is complete this is where it gets tricky if you hit reboot it's just gonna redo the whole thing again it's just gonna spin and you feel like you're going in circles so what we want to do is we want to go to devices optical drive all the way down to remove disk from virtual drive right here on the very bottom we're going to do that we're going to force on mount it's going to give us an error there it is and then we're going to shut it down we're going to power off the machine so that x and then power off the machine uh, yeah i constantly tell students don't do that but for this particular case this is a workaround to get it to work uh, and now we're going to boot that sucker back up and it should come up without a hitch back into our environment and then we'll configure pf sense to to do the things that we need to do, all right? All right, so back into our Kali box. Uh, just to prove that it doesn't have access to the internet, we're gonna try and ping something. We're gonna ping Google. And you notice it has temporary fire resolution. Uh, so there's no way this thing can, can access the outside internet right now at all. Uh, and we'll fix that here in a few minutes. So let's get our PF sense up and going, and then we will, we will add some configurations to it and go through the wall on that one. Okay, so our PFSense is finally up. You'll notice that our WAN is operating on 10.0.2.25. Uh, 
and our LAN, our local area network, our host only network is on 192.168.1.1. Now, I want to point something out to you. If we go back to our Cali box, why is that one? I don't think that's the right Cali. I have two Cali's up and going right now. Let me bring up this one. You'll notice that our IP address is 192.168.56. So it's not going to be able to talk to one another, but I want to prove that it can't talk to one another uh, for, for my students that are misbelieving me, right? So I should be able to hit that IP address, right? So 192.168.1.1, and it doesn't. It doesn't see it because it's on the wrong one. So we need to go back into our PF sense here, and we really have two options at this point, right? We, right now, we can make our our system, our, uh, our, our land box, our firewall, operate as a DHCP, uh, and then assign IP addresses, and then if I configured it that way, all I would have to do is re literally reboot my Cali box. It would get its IP address from the PFSense as long as I bring up that PFSense first um, and let it have some time to actually, you know, connect to the network. Any any box that I brought up after that would actually take over that 192.1.1, and that, let's prove that. Let's go back into our thing here. Let me bring up a Windows 10, and I'll show you what I'm talking about, right? Uh, Windows 10 should come up with a 192.168.1.1 network, and then I should be able to log into it uh, with that Windows 10 box on that same IP address. Or I shouldn't say 1.1, 1.0 slash 24 network. It should be on that 192.168.1 network, uh, and I could be able to bring up the system, and then I can prove that it shows up and it has internet. We're going to configure this PFSense to be a little bit more in line with what my vision is where we have this server operating as our DHCP, not the firewall, okay? So let me log into this Windows 10 and we should be able to get an IP address from here. So now I already set up Windows 10 because I knew I was going this route just, just to show you real quick. Windows 10 is on host only. It has no adapter one, is not active. All right, so let's bring this back up. Let me type in CMD. And then if I do an IP config, IP config, because the firewall was brought up first, it's gonna be on that 192.168.1.1 network. And I can probably even access, nope, if I can even access 192.168.1.1, the PFSense firewall, if I do advanced and then continue, you'll see that I can, I can connect to it. But I don't want this, right? I want, uh, my Windows Server to act as the DHCP, not this, right? So I need to make some changes. Um, and so we're going to go back into our firewall. We're going to hit uh, set interfaces, IP addresses. So we're going to hit option two. Go ahead and capture that. So option two, we're going to do the LAN side. So option two again. And then it says enter the LAN IPv4 address. We're going to do 192.168. Oops, I got my numlock is not on. 192.168.56.1, I think is what the IP address we're going to put on this one. And then subnet mass are entered as bit counts. Da da da. Enter the new bit count. 1 to 30. We're going to do 24 right there. Uh, and then. Enter WAN, enter new LAN IPv4 upstream gateway address. Okay, for a LAN, press enter for none. We're going to do 192, for the gateway address, we're going to do 192.168.56.0. And then IPv6, we don't want one. Do you want to enable DHCP? We do not. So we're going to hit no. Do you want to revert to HTTP? Yes, we do. And then we'll let it do its thing. Press enter to continue. Okay, so now our IP address for our LAN, let me get into here, is 192.168.56.1. If I go into Cali Purple now, I should be able to ping Google. Now, hopefully it doesn't make a fool out of me. Of course it is. So let's do an IF config. It is 101. Let's see if it'll let me connect to it. Let me go over here. Let's do 192.168. Oops, not dot one. Dot five six dot one, and it's gonna let me in there. All right, so let's do some configurations on this point. Maybe it has it all turned off and it's not gonna let me access the system at all. So I believe it's admin, and then pfsense is the password. Let's sign in. I, of course, I'm gonna save it. 
right? And the account admin vault value, yada, yada, yada. If I was in a real environment, I would want to change that. Uh, but for me, I think I'm actually going to change it. I think I'm going to change it to Tor, uh, like I always do for all my passwords that I don't want to remember, uh, which isn't very value stellar, right? But home lab, right? Home lab, we're going to do all this stuff. Okay, uh, global support, yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't care about that. All right, step nine, what do we want to call it? We're going to call it PFSense. Do we want to name it uh, a domain? Right now it's set as home.arpa. I'm just going to call it home, okay? D primary DNS server. Uh, would be, we're going to use Google's 8.8.8.8, .8 secondary 8.8.8.4, because we still want to allow it to, to do it, right? We still want it to get normal internet traffic, okay? Time server host name, we'll leave that alone. ETC, UTC, we can change this. I'm going to put it at, where are you at? Where are you at? Where are you at? I want to go to United States. Come on. Did I miss it? Let's see here. America, Guadalupe, Indiana, Indianapolis. We don't want Indianapolis. I live in Phoenix, so I, I want something close to Phoenix or California. Take your pick. Send me one of those. It doesn't have Phoenix. Let's see if it has California. California. Da -da. All right. Surely you have Los Angeles. Okay. I see Indiana. It really likes Indiana. I see Kentucky. How do you not have Arizona? Or California. Am I missing it? Let's see. You don't have Arizona. Well, that's Africa. Let me scroll down. America, Argentina, Iguana, nope, Argentina, Aruba, Jamaica. No, I didn't want it. Yeah, I know. Okay. How do you not have. You have Indianapolis, but you don't have any of the other states. Okay. I'm confused here. Okay. You even have Kentucky. I'm calling. I'm calling. Fubar on this sucker. Antarctica. Okay, I, I don't even know what to do with this one. We're going to go with... Wait, wait, I saw it. Phoenix. How, why would you put Phoenix in... Never mind. Okay, we're going to do Phoenix. That's fine. I like Phoenix. All right, selected type. Okay, on the screen, wide area network can be configured. We want our wide area on DHCP. Yeah, I don't mind DHCP being on wide area network. I don't need to set an M MC... Uh, MT yeah, I don't need to see a meta MAC address. I don't need to set an MTU. And I don't need to set MSS. I'm going to do, I'm not going to do a static. We don't need to. Uh, do we want to, we're not going to do with any of this. Matter of fact, we don't need to do a lot of this stuff. So we're going to bypass all of this. Okay, this is on the reverse side. So we're operating on 192.168.56.1, just like I set it up originally. We're on a subnet mask at 24, which is fine. Admin password, I'm gonna change this. I'm gonna choose Tor, and then Tor again. I'll have to remember that next time I come in. Yeah, I'm gonna save it. And then I have to reload it, okay? Uh, and so our initial setup, it looks like reload in progress. Okay, and we're all set up here. I can check for updates, but we're not gonna check for updates. We're gonna let it swing past. We're gonna have to finish, and then we are going to stop here for now. I'm gonna go ahead and accept this. Uh, and then thank you, da da da. We're gonna close that. Uh, we're gonna stop right here, right? You'll notice that it's uh, retrieving support information. Let it do its thing. Let it support its information. Let it grab all that data. Uh, when we come back, so this is part one. This is just the install, basic configuration. When we do part two, we're gonna go through and we're gonna we're gonna finish setting this up. We're gonna block some stuff. We're gonna unblock some stuff. Uh, and we're just gonna we're gonna mess around with it. I gotta tell you, for for a firewall, this is a great learning environment for a firewall. It's free. It's something that doesn't take a lot of resources, uh, and definitely something you should be using in your virtual home environment. Uh, with the goal of being able that that Keoptrix system that we saw that we've talked about a little bit, we've done scans against it. We are gonna break into it, but I don't want to hack into it yet. I want to hack into it from the outside of this firewall after we get an IDS installed, after we get Suricata, after we get uh, a sim plugged in so that we could grab all those logs because that's how a real learning environment should be in if we really want to learn cybersecurity and that's the goal for this all right i'm going to cut this video off here thank you so much for joining me please don't forget to like subscribe and hit that little button and i will talk to you all later thank you so much have a good one